Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. If you're looking for information about the Garmin Approach R10 radar metrics, then you've come to the right place. Now, before I get started, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing right now. It'll really allow my channel to grow more and allow me to continue to bring videos just like this to YouTube. Let's get right into this. So what I did was I went down to my golf sim and took some swings with my nine iron, seven iron and driver and took some examples. And I'm gonna go over all of the data, all of the radar metrics with the Garmin Approach R10. Here are the radar metrics that are available with the R10. You have club head speed, club face angle, club path angle, angle of attack, ball speed, launch angle, launch direction, spin axis, spin rate, apex height, smash factor, carry distance, total distance, and deviation distance. Let's start first with club speed and club face angle. So what I did was I picked a nine iron in which I hit it left so you can see what happened on that shot. Let's look at that first. So what I did was I combined club speed and club face angle on this. It was a decent strike. Good smash factor, 75.9 miles per hour on the club. But if you look at the graphic here, on the bottom face to path was 5.7 degrees left and face to target was 10.5 degrees left. And what that caused obviously is for my strike to go left. Now you can take that data to improve your face to path. So maybe it was your setup or maybe you didn't have your club square to the ball, you can figure that out. Your data from the radar metrics can really help you with that. Now let's move on to club path angle. I did one example from an outside to in swing and then one example from an inside to out swing. And I've really improved to have more of an inside out swing. Um, I try to stay under three degrees if I can uh, with my irons and under six degrees outside in uh, with my driver. Uh, if I swing slower, I can get my inside to out swing, but really I wanna be able to play golf and hit it hard. So right now it's working pretty good. So let's take a look at both these examples. This is the first one, which is actually outside to in more. And this is a nine iron. So 76 mile per hour, nice and straight path. But if you look at the bottom, the club path was 6.8 degrees left. And what that means is, is that I was swinging a bit over the top or outside in, okay? My face to path was right 7.3 degrees. So that allowed my shot to go straight. Let's take a look at the next shot. Also with the same nine iron, 74 miles an hour. But if you look at the bottom, my club path, was inside to out or 2.2 degrees right, which is inside to out. My face to path is 1.7 degrees left, which is fine. Face to target is 0.5 degrees to the right, which is just fine. Was a good strike, good result, 153 yards with the rollout. Next is angle of attack, and I work on this a lot. So you really wanna be hitting down, as you probably already know, with your irons. So the first example is me hitting down on the ball slightly. This is with a nine iron. Good strike, 77.9 miles an hour on the club speed. Decent result, 147 yards. If you look all the way to the bottom of the green section, angle of attack all the way to the right bottom is minus one degrees, which means I hit down on the ball. That was a very good result. I would have been very, very happy with that. Now let's look at the next one. All right, next one I actually hit with a seven iron. Went a little left, so we'd be a little bit left of the green. But if you look at the bottom of the graphic in the green, the angle of attack was 5.7 degrees up. And even though we had a good result with 181.7 total yards, uh, my club path was good, my face to path was pretty good, um, but the face to target was 6.3 degrees left, so it went left. But again, I could have probably drove that ball a little bit further had I hit down on it and I would have had more of a loft, probably like 19.5 degrees vertical launch on that one. 
All right, next radar metric is the launch angle and launch direction. So for launch angle and direction, I used a seven iron. It's a good strike. 87.5 miles an hour on the club speed. And if we look at the vertical launch, it was 19.9 degrees. If you look at it in the green, uh, kind of going back to the last one I talked about, uh, I hit a little bit more down on this one at 1.7 degrees where before I was like five point something degrees up. So we got more of a vertical launch on that. And the height was 103.8 feet. So that was a good strike on that one for sure. And then as far as the launch direction, it was right 1.2 degrees. And then laterally it was 7.2 yards. So not a bad strike at all. All right, next is spin axis and spin rate. The spin axis is the curvature of your golf shot or basically negative or positive left or right. And then the spin rate is the amount of spin the golf ball immediately after impact. So let's look at this seven iron. Now I hit this one low. Uh, the spin rate was 3164 RPMs. And if we look at the graphic, I had a good result with rollout, 193.5 yards because I hit it so low. But if you look at the spin axis in the blue, it was left 6.3 degrees and the spin was 3164 RPMs. So that spin helped that ball hook a little bit left. Next radar metric is apex height. So basically it's the peak height, pretty obvious max height of your ball in the flight. So let's take a look at that one. This is a seven iron. Pretty good result on this one, 86.4 miles an hour, nice and straight, nice and high, 19.1 degrees vertical launch. So if you look at the graphic in the middle in green, you'll see the height is 97.2 feet. And this ball hitting that at a green that was say, you know, 175 to 185 yards, that would have been a perfect result because we had 175 yards of carry and 188.6 total yards on that one. All right, next is smash factor. This is easily my favorite radar metric. I use this to make sure I've made a good strike on my golf ball. So essentially smash factor is the efficiency. And to calculate smash factor, you just divide the ball speed by the club speed. So a high smash factor means good energy transfer to the ball. 1.5 is basically the maximum smash factor for a driver. So, so the lofted clubs are going to have a much lower smash factor. So a pitching wedge or a nine iron will have a much lower smash factor. So uh, I printed the PGA Tour smash factor averages and for driver it's 1.48. Also the same thing for a three wood. Three iron is 1.45, four iron is 1.43, five iron is 1.41, six iron is 1.38. 7 iron 1.33, 8 iron is 1.32, 9 iron is 1.28, and the pitching wedge is 1.23. So that's tour average. Let's take a look at this swing. And I use a driver for this one. Right off the bat, it was 104.2 miles an hour. So in this case, my face to path was terrible. I left it wide open. If you look at the bottom at 19.5 degrees. And if you look in the red at the top, my smash factor was 1.32. So even though I swung the club at 104 miles an hour, because I left that club face open, it just created a ton of spin to the right and the ball didn't go anywhere. It went a total of 225.2 yards. So let's look at the next one. This is a better example of a good smash factor. Same driver, 101.4 miles an hour on the swing, but my smash factor on this one was 1.45. It had a total distance of 275.7 yards. So looking at the graphic, you'll see the smash factor at 1.45 with the 101 mile per hour clubs, club speed. So if you look at the bottom, my face to path was about perfect at 0.2 degrees. My club path was very good at 3.3 degrees left. 
Ideally, I want to be under zero if I can. The one thing I've learned is that the harder I swing, and I can swing about 112 miles an hour, if I do that, I come more outside in and it doesn't matter. So I find that as long as I stay under 106 miles an hour on my swing, I stay under six degrees outside to in, hopefully around three, and I have a good result. Next three radar metrics is carry distance, total distance, and deviation distance. I think these are all obvious. Carry distance, just the total ball flight before the rollout. Total distance is with the rollout, and the deviation distance is right or left. So let's take a look at this example. This is with driver as well. This one we hit at 101.7 miles an hour. This is a pretty good strike. Good result, 273.7 yards. And if we look at the graphic, looking at the carry distance in the red, you have 255.6 yards. Total distance is with the rollout at 273.7 yards with 18.1 yards of roll. And then the deviation distance, which is yards left or right, that is going to be laterally, that is going to be laterally 7.6 yards to the right. So not bad, I would be extremely happy on a 60 yard fairway. Well, that's gonna be about it for today's video. I certainly do appreciate you watching today. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed today's content and share it with any of your friends that may be interested in the Garmin Approach R10 radar metrics. Please subscribe right now if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.